Domo Amejin des, back with another beginning Japanese lesson. Today, we're going to talk about yo and ne, lesson 22. To review, all you have to do is review how to tell time. We're going to use that a little bit today. And our key sentence, kono kouen wa kirei desu ne. Okay. Vocabulary, not too much. Um, starting with park at the top, kouen, kouen, okay, park. A police box, kouban. Koban. I'm going to talk more about that later. And uh, textbook, the word for textbook in Japanese is kyokasho. Kyokasho. Cafe, the word for a cafe in Japanese is kafe. Kafe. The informative particle yo and the friendly particle ne, those will be our grammar points for today. And then a responsive phrase, uh, meaning right or yeah, uh, would be so desu ne. So desu ne. Yeah, right, something like that. Kouban, let's talk about kouban. Um, these are, if you look in a dictionary, sometimes they're translated as a neighborhood police station or a mini police station in some kind of neighborhood. Uh, I believe Nakama, the textbook series, translate it, translates it as a police box, which does imply kind of a smaller area. And that's just what these are. These are miniature, like, police stations um, or police points around the neighborhood that are just there purely for information. People go there to ask for directions or to ask like what is popular around this area. Um, you'll see usually maps posted by them. In this particular Koban, in this picture, you have a wanted poster right there. So sometimes they'll post, you know, wanted individuals at the police box, but there will always be, always be police staff to there, and they're everywhere in Japan. You can see here on Google Maps, and on most maps in Japan, in Japanese, the police boxes are marked with an X symbol, for whatever reason, I don't know, but it's, uh, here it's actually called police box, that's so funny. Alright, let's get into the grammar, let's start with yo. So, um, whenever you are making a statement in Japanese, uh, where you're, you're, you know that you know <laughs> the information. You are so po you're a hundred percent positive that you know what you're talking about, and you kind of assume that the people you're telling it to don't know. Um, then you can use yo. All right, everyone uses this in in Japan. If you use this um, more in your speech, it'll sound very natural Japanese. Very without yo, it, your Japanese kind of sounds bland. Okay. So, oh, and you also often hear this, you often hear yo used in phrases like when you're answering questions of what time is it or where things are when you give directions, okay? Yo is typically used when answering someone's question about something. For example, ima nanji desu ka? This is where time comes in, right? What time is it now? Ichiji desu yo. Ichiji desu yo. It's one o'clock. Now, you can get rid of yo, right, and say ichiji desu. And the translation in English would still be the same. It's one o'clock. The yo here, I, I don't translate yo in English because you can't really translate it. It's a feeling. When you add yo, you're adding a feeling into your statement. That feeling of, I know what I'm talking about, okay? Ichiji desu yo. You, you just looked at your watch. Uh, ichiji desu yo. And you're telling them that information that they probably don't know. Another uh, example, この辺に交番がありますか? Is there a police box in this area? Uh, ありますよ、あそこです。I mean, technically, you could also add yo after あそこです。ありますよ、あそこですよ。Okay, uh, this is very natural sounding Japanese. Try not to use yo in self-introductions when you give, like, when you talk about yourself. あ、私は刑事ですよ。that doesn't sound natural. I mean, grammatically, you can do it, and maybe there are people who do do this, um, but I, I just, I wouldn't. <laughs> Not in self-introductions, okay? Usually when you're giving new information on something besides you, all right, or if you're emphasizing, uh, for example, if someone's talking to you, uh, but they don't know that you're you, and they're talking about you, okay? Uh, for example, if your name is Casey, um, and they're talking about Casey, and they don't realize that you are Casey, you could pipe in at some point and say, eh, 私は刑事ですよ. 
in that case, this SEO is fine because you are really telling them, hey, something they don't know. Okay, that's all what yo is about. This is interesting. Um, Y'all know I like WaniKani a lot, this kanji learning program. And at the bottom of every page on their website is this copyright right here in pink. Copyright Tofugu LLC Yo. <laughs> and that Yo is the Yo particle we're talking about now, the informative particle. Hey, we have a copyright, is what they're saying. Activity one, add in Yo wherever necessary to make the statement sound more natural. All right. Pause the video, try it on your own. I'm gonna answer this one right now. Number one. Sono hito wa doko kara kimashita ka? They're asking, where did that person come from? They're asking a question, and the person who answers says, Kanada kara kimashita. Now remember, yo is usually used in response to a question when you're giving information they you think they don't know. So, yo would go here in the response in green. Canada kara kimashita yo. Sounds very natural. Number two. Rebecca wa doko de shigoto shimasu ka? Where will Rebecca do her work? Or where does she do her work? Cafe de shigoto shimasu. The response is, oh, she works at a cafe. Where would yo go? Yo goes at the response, right, in green. Cafe de shigoto shimasu yo. Like that. Number three, our prime example here. Ima, nanji desu ka? The response is, yoji desu. Naturally, we would say in Japanese, yoji desu yo, yoji desu yo. Hmm. Number four, watashi wa Virginia kara kimashita. I, I am from Virginia. Ah, so desu ka? Virginia ni nani ga arimasu ka? What is in Virginia? Right, is what the green is asking here. And the person responds back, Ah, mise ga taksan arimasu. Mise ga taksan arimasu. Okay, where would we put yo here? This is a little tricky. Um, in the answers slide, I'm going to put only one yo at the very last line. Mise ga taksan arimasu yo. Arimasu yo. Like that. Technically, you could also put it uh, at the end of kimashita. Watashi wa bajin ya kare kimashita yo. But again, I try to avoid using yo in self introductions. Um, which is why on the next slide, answer slide, I'm only going to put yo after the uh, third sentence. Number five. Sono tatemono wa ginko desu ka? Remember, tatemono is building and ginko is bank. Is that building a bank? Is what he's asking. Hi, so this. Hi, so this. Remember, so this, so this is like yes, hi, right, okay. And then the person uh, who asked the question in the first place says, "Arigatou gozaimasu." Arigatou gozaimasu. Very polite way of thanking someone. Where would yo go? Well, yo goes on the second line in green, right? Sono tatemono wa ginko desu ka? Hai, so desu yo. Ah, arigatou gozaimasu. Okay, this is probably two people passing on the street, you know, and it's not uncommon for strangers who don't even know you to use yo when helping you find something, right? Number six. Yoyogi kouen wa doko ni arimasu ka? Tokyo ni arimasu. <laughs> Where would yo go here? Well, after the question in the answer, right? Tokyo ni arimasu yo. Tokyo ni arimasu yo. Right. Here are the answers with yo. Another activity for yo, this is a shorter one. Use the illustrations below to provide an answer for each bubble in Japanese. So number one, I'll oh, pause the video, try it on your own. I'm going to answer it right now. Number one. The guy says, Kono kyokasho wa dare no desu ka? Remember, dare means who, and no makes it possessive. So whose? Dare no. Dare no desu ka? Whose is it? The uh, textbook. Kyokasho. Kyokasho. Um, and if we look to the right, we see that Derek owns a kyokasho. All right. So we can say, in a very basic short answer, we can say, eh, Derek no desu. But 
we're answering someone's question, giving information that we believe they don't know, and they don't know because they're asking the question. So we we should add yo, right, to make it sound natural. Deriku no desu yo. Okay. Number two. Kono denwa wa dare no desu ka? Whose phone is this? The woman can reply. Well, whose is it? Ah, the bottom guy has a phone. Tobias. Tobias. All right. Uh, so the woman here would say in number two, Tobias no desu yo. Tobias no desu yo. Mm. And number three, the last one. Kono inu wa dare no desu ka? Says the, the woman. The only person who owns an inu is Veronica. 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 Right? So the guy would reply saying, Veronica no desu yo. Veronica no desu yo. Here are the answers in bold. Enough about yo. Let's talk about ne. Ne. Ne is a little trickier. It has two uh, usages, right? Yo really has one primary usage that we know so far. And now we're getting to ne. Ne has two possible usages. The first one is what I like to call the friendly ne, the friendly particle, right? You can, uh, when you use this, when you attach this to basically any general statement, that you make, this is any general statement, um, it makes your statement feel softer and therefore friendlier, okay? Um, a lot of times textbooks say that this ne creates like a, a closeness between speakers. That's That closeness is what I call friendliness, all right? Um, one thing to know, one important note is that ne always, always, always demands a response. It requires a response. All right, no matter what ne it is, you're going to have a response. So, um, the friendly ne, uh, the response that someone gives for a friendly ne will usually have ne at the end as well. So, you're going to see ne twice at the end of uh, two people's dialogue. All right, uh, so for example, kono kouen wa ii desu. This is without ne. This is a general statement. Oh, this park is nice. Remember, e means good, nice, well. Very positive adjective. Kono kouen wa e desu. This park is nice. No one else has to respond to that. <laughs> okay, but if you add ne, people are going to respond. People will respond. Kono kouen wa e desu ne. E desu ne. Okay, e desu ne. Very flat kind of ne pronunciation, very flat pitch or tone, This ne. Okay, um, and the response that someone would give, a typical response would be so this ne, so this ne, same ne, okay, friendly ne. This is always the case with our friendly ne here. And remember, this is for general statements about things like, ah, kono koen wa ii desu ne, okay. There's a second ne, all right? This is the confirmation ne, all right? With yo, you know what you're talking about. You're 100% sure, okay, when you use yo. When you use a confirmation ne, you're 90% sure. You're not 100%, but you're pretty sure what you're about to say is right, okay? Or what you are saying is correct, 90%. Um, there's a chance you could be wrong, but you're going to confirm it with ne, confirmation ne, okay? Now, when you do state things with confirmation ne, um, it is a question in English, okay? But you don't use a question mark and there's no ka. It just ends with ne, ne, all right? And the pitch is different, right? Because it's a question. Friendly ne is ne. But the confirmation ne, it's a question. So you're saying ne. All right, it's going to kind of go up a little bit, like a question. Um, and responses to this, because it's a question, are either height or ie, right? Something like that. There's no reusing of ne, like the friendly ne that we just talked about. For example, Tanaka-san wa daigakusei desu ne. Okay, Tanaka, Tanaka is a university student, right? In English, this confirmation ne is usually translated as right, okay? 
you're confirming your uh, supposition, right? And the answer for that would just be hi. Hi. Tanaka san wa daigakusei desu ne. Hi. All right. Another example. Asoko ni kouban ga arimasu ne. Ne. Okay. Uh, they're asking for a confirmation. They're pretty sure. Maybe they've been to this place before and they're subtly remembering there being a police box over there. Right? But this person, <laughs> in, in this particular example, is um, responding negatively. Okay, look, this person is using yo because they know for sure, they know what they're talking about. There is none. Maybe not anymore, but there is none now. Okay? Activity three. You are pretty sure each person owns each of these things. Confirm by asking a question using ne. Ne. Okay. You might recognize this activity. I used it, um, I believe, in lesson 20, bringing it back. Uh, we're going to make, you can make two possible statements about each uh, question, right? Because each person here is shown to own uh, two things per, per person. So let's make um, some statements. For each of these people, starting with Johnny. Pause the video, try it on your own. I'm gonna answer it right now. Johnny, number one. We can say two things about him. He owns a book and he owns a car, but we're gonna use ne to confirm. He owns a book, right? He owns a car, right? Uh, so in Japanese, that would be Johnny wa hon ga arimasu ne? Arimasu ne? Johnny wa Kuruma ga arimasu ne? Okay. Uh, number two, Alexa. Alexa. Alexa wa akachan ga imasu ne? Imasu ne? Isu would be chair, so we could also say Alexa wa isu ga arimasu ne? Mm. Number three, Brendan. Brendan wa. Brendan. <laughs> Brendan wa inu ga. Imasune. Denwa is phone, so we could say Brendan wa denwa ga arimasune. He has a phone, right? You could also say Johnny no ie ni, or Alexa no ie ni, or Brendan no ie ni. These things ga arimas imasune as well. Uh, but for this exercise, I just did it like that. There are the answers. Let's move on. Listening practice, winding down here. Listen as I read two compositions twice. Listen and write down what you hear. Pause the video if you need more time. I'm going to start with number one now. Ano inu wa hayashi san no inu desu ne. Ano inu wa hayashi san no inu desu ne. Pause the video if you need more time. I'm going to show the answer right now. Right, they're confirming. That's his dog. That dog is Hayashi's dog, right? Number two. Pause the video if you need more time. Here's the answer for number two. There is no quiz tomorrow. Translation practice. Translate the following statements into either English or Japanese. The bottom one might be a little trickier. Try it anyway. Remember, splendid is, well, you have to remember that. Pause the video, try it on your own. I'm going to give the answers right now. The top guy says, Goji desu yo. Goji desu yo. Which basically means, it's 5 o'clock in English. There's really nothing you have to add to that. It's 5 o'clock is fine. And the girl on the bottom says, he's a really splendid teacher. <laughs> I could also have worded this, he's a really fine teacher, or he's a really good teacher, something like that. In Japanese, this would be, Kare wa tottemo rippana sensei desu ne. Kare wa tottemo rippana sensei desu ne. All right, notice she's making a general statement, but she's adding ne on there to make it kind of friendlier. This is the friendly ne. Not the confirmation ne, right? Kare wa he, 
or him. Totemo is very or really in this case. Lipana, lipana is splendid, fine, excellent, good, wonderful, something like that. Sensei is teacher. Uh, you could also have put kyoshi and then desne, desne, right? That uh, friendly ne. Back to our key sentence. Kono wa kirei desu ne. This park is pretty. And then that would elicit someone's response with ne. Shukudai, homework. Review the sentences in previous lectures, like telling time and stating locations, and uh, the one with arimas. Okay? See if you can make them more natural by adding on yo or ne. A lot of the sentences, I was cringing writing them because I was like, oh, this needs a yo or this needs a ne. Okay, so go back, see if you can find them. Let us know in the comment section below. Also, there is a worksheet that accompanies this lesson. I believe this worksheet will also include a dialogue, so look out for that. You can find the link to it in the description uh, from my website. Otherwise, that's about it. Hope you guys understood everything. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in a future lecture.